we have started with the topic of projection in the last term and uh, in that one you have seen different types of projection system the projection system can be classified on the basis of preserving property on the basis of developing surface on the basis of view on the basis of aspect okay so these are the different ways in which the projection can be classified write down that classification in your copy So everyone must have remember area preserving, shape preserving, distance preserving, direction preserving, then cylindrical projection, conic projection, planar or azimuthal projection. After that, it was on the basis of aspect, which was normal, transverse, and oblique. After that. It was on the basis of position of light source. It was gnomonic, stereographic, and orthographic. So these were the different type of projections that we have studied previously. After that, you have seen the UTM projection. Okay. So write down the properties that you have remembered till now. What were the properties of UTM projection? So these are the different characteristics or properties of UTM. Okay. So projection is transverse mercator. So when it is mercator, it means it is a cylindrical projection. And when it is transverse, it means the polar axis and the axis of cylinder will be at 90 degree. Okay. Origin of longitude is central meridian of E zone. Latitude of origin. Zero degree, the equator. The measurement unit will be meter. There will be false northing, false easting. Scale factor will vary in each of the zone. There are total 60 zones in, in the UTM. And in each zone, the scale factor varies from 0 0.996 at the central meridian to the boundary of that zone. Okay. This UTM does not capture the zone uh, polar region the latitude limit of the system is 84 degree north to 80 degree south 84 degree north to 80 degree south so that the distortion can be avoided okay. so this was the utm projection system that we have discussed in the last turn and in the end we have seen the survey of india nomenclature how the sheets are numbered over there okay. so if you remember the first, there will be numbering. 
So this one was the INAC series topographic maps nomenclature. In this, the very first one is at one is to one million. This map is at four degree cross four degree. Okay. Then this one is to one million, which is four degree cross four degree tile. It can be divided into one degree cross one degree tile, and the scale will be at one is to two lakh fifty thousand. They all are. Alphabetically numbered, okay, A, B, C, D up to P. After that, it is further divided into 15-minute cross, 15-minute sheet, which will be at one is to fifty thousand. So the number will again in the numeric order. So that's when the last time I was asking when a sheet number is given to you, like if I say it was for the Prayagraj, it was 63 G. So when we say 63 G, you should automatically understand that the scale will be one is to two lakh fifty thousand. And it will be one degree cross one degree. How I am deducting this information from just sheet number? Because sixteen. Uh, sorry, it was sixty-four G. So sixty-four means one is to one M. When it is sixty-four G, then it will be one is to two lakh fifty thousand one cross one. Sixty-three G. Fifteen. Again, it will be a fifteen minute cross fifteen minute tile. And the scale will be one is to fifty thousand. So this is how you can conclude some of the information. What will be the lat long extent? Okay. Apart from that, what will be the scale of that topo sheet? This nomenclature was of for the older series map. Nowadays, Survey of India publishes OSM series map. The nomenclature is little bit different, but more or less same to that one. now in today's turn we will see some more sources of data but before going to that one i am giving you one numerical to solve today as you remember previously we have learned in the geodesy about the six parameters that are used to model the earth okay. now in this question Major axis and minor axis value as per the WGS 1984 is given over here. Okay, as you can see it on the screen, value of major axis and the value of minor axis. Now, what you need to do, you need to calculate all the six parameters from this particular major and minor axis length. Okay, so in a copy, write down the length of major axis, length of minor axis. After that, start calculating the other parameters. So these are the formulas that you can use. First, you need to compute semi-major axis, semi-minor axis. Later on, you can compute flattening, inverse flattening, eccentricity, second eccentricity by using these formulas. So quickly calculate all these values. I am giving you five minutes time to calculate all the six parameters of the earth using the value of major axis and minor axis. Ma'am. Yes. Question. Can I see the question again? I was writing.
Shall I say the values that I got? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, show the answers you can match with it. Please mute yourself. So this one is the final answer. I hope all of you have got this one. If there is any confusion, then you can ask. So here, major axis and minor axis length are already given. First two parameter is semi-major axis, semi-minor axis. They are simply computed by dividing the value of corresponding axis by two. Then flattening, it is A minus B upon A. Again, you simply put the value of A and B. A stands for semi-major axis and B stands for semi-minor axis. So if you put all these values over here, the value of flattening could be computed. After that, it is inverse flattening. Again, you can compute it like A upon A minus B, or you have already computed flattening value. So divide one divided by value of F. Okay. Then eccentricity, it is under root of A square minus B square upon A. Just put the values and the final answer will come. Second eccentricity, same, but in this case, it will be divided by semi minor axis. So this is how all the six parameters will be computed if you have major axis and minor axis. If you remember, I think so all of you have noted it down. Ma'am, yes, ma'am, major axis or minor axis could impose a divisible computer. Semi major axis. Eh? जो पैरामीटर निकलता है वो मेजर एक्सिस में ही होता है वो सेमी मेजर एक्सिस होता है इस कारण से उसको डिवाइडेड बाय टू किया गया क्वेश्चन में जो दिया गया था वो मेजर एक्सिस और माइनर एक्सिस की लेंथ दी गई थी ओके ओके मैम You know, when the GCS, geographic coordinate system, or it is PCS, projected coordinate system are given, like when GCS is given, as you can see on the screen, I have highlighted it, the information of semi-major axis, semi-minor axis, and inverse flattening is given. Okay. So these three were the major parameters that are considered. And if we go for the second one, which is the, as you can see in the starting, so it is a planar coordinate system. In the planar coordinate system, you can see what will be the central meridian, what will be the standard parallel. Then standard parallel one, standard parallel two. Then it is 
what will be the latitude of origin what will be the unit of measurement along with the northing and easting cross northing and easting values so these are the different parameters that we consider if we have a geographic coordinate system gcs okay in gcs the values will come in latitude and longitude so if we are using geographic coordinate system which have latitude and longitude in that case you will find all these six parameters that we have, we have just computed among them eccentricity and second eccentricity is not of much use the first three parameters means semi major axis semi minor axis and inverse flattening are used semi uh, sorry flattening and inverse flattening both are similar like inverse flattening is used in order to reduce the mathematical calculation or to remove the decimal uh, calculation reduce the decimal calculation that's why inverse flattening is used so when you have a geographic coordinate system these three parameters semi major axis semi minor axis and inverse flattening were considered if you are using any of the planar coordinate system somebody is not on mute please mute yourself and if you are using this planar coordinate system in that case we are using planar coordinate system in that case all the parameters that we have discussed while utm you can see on the screen again that false easting false northing central meridian scale factor latitude of origin linear unit okay? these values are given we can also find the same projection and geographic coordinate system all these values are given at the top of the specification isn't it so this is how this gcs and pcs things are used over here now i am starting today's lecture we have enough of background so in today's turn we are starting with spatial referencing whenever we discuss about the spatial data there are two important factors spatial referencing and topology these two things are usually mentioned when we talk about the spatial data the first thing first what is spatial referencing i am just reading it out a referencing system is used to locate a feature on the earth or a two dimensional representation of the surface such as map there are number of characteristics that a referencing system should have these include stability the ability to show points lines and areas and the ability to measure length size and shape okay is there some disturbance uh, so all of you are on mute my audio is okay or not yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so when we talk about any of the spatial data we have to refer that thing in reference to the earth surface okay so how we are going to refer the earth surface we need a referencing system for that okay so how we can do a spatial referencing there are major three categories okay first one is the geographic coordinate system second one is the rectangular coordinate system or planar coordinate system and fourth one is the non coordinate system so we have discussing all these thing previously also so you have just seen geographic coordinate system okay what is geographic coordinate system so when somebody says that my data is in geographic coordinate system how does that data will appear okay first you see the example of this one then i will explain so as you can see on the screen this one is the prayagraj data all the prayagraj village boundary the schools of the prayagraj are located on the screen and if you see in the bottom right corner i have placed my cursor over there if you see this place you can find it is written 
81.862.25.387 decimal degree. So basically, this one is the longitude and latitude value which is given over here. Okay. Now. Suppose I want to calculate the area. Okay. I am adding an attribute of area over here. Okay. So when I am adding it and if I try to calculate this area, When I'm calculating this area, I have to select the projected coordinate system over here. I'm going to be field calc. There's a little bit lag. Now here on the screen, you can see they are asking to select the coordinate system. Use coordinate system of the data source. I have selected PCS, projected coordinate system. If I select GCS, geographic coordinate system, you can see area become disabled. Okay. Area is disabled, perimeter is disabled. I can just calculate the X coordinate centroid, Y coordinate of centroid. Okay. I cannot calculate the area and parameter. I can calculate only when I will use the projected coordinate system over here. So what happens if you use the geographic coordinate system, you can see the data in You can see the data in the form of latitude and longitude. But if you want to compute anything like area, anything like length, perimeter, something like that, in that case, you cannot use the geographic coordinate system. So geographic coordinate system, the only true geographic coordinate system are latitude and longitude. We have already covered about the definition of latitude and longitude, about the notation DD and DMS of latitude and longitude about how to convert it into each other. I hope every one remember which one represent X and which one represent Y. Okay. Anyone of you? Okay. Anyone of you can tell? Which one will give the latitude? X will give uh, long longitude will give and, and Y give. And yes. I give latitude. Yes. All of you remember this thing that X will be given by longitude, Y will be given by latitude. So this whole grid is known as the graticule. This is a geographic coordinate system and it is a very common way to represent any place on the earth. But as I have just shown you, the problem with latitude and longitude is that you cannot calculate the value of area, of length, of perimeter, you cannot calculate anything in terms of meter because when we calculate such type of thing, it means that it will be a flat surface. You cannot compute these things in on a curved surface. And when we are talking about the geographic coordinate system, in that case, we are assuming the or we are taking the ellipsoidal surface of the earth, the mathematical ellipsoidal surface of the earth. That's why you need to set whenever you are creating a shape file, whenever you are performing the georeferencing. I hope everyone remember during the laboratory session that when we are doing that thing, we have to give all these values over here. Like I will give you one example again. So this one is the ArcGIS software. The process is more or less same. I am creating a shape file. Or suppose I am giving a name. Say I want to digitize all the. Say, Roads. Feature type will be polyline. In that one, see, you have to give the spatial reference. There is a different section for this one. Spatial reference, right now, the description is unknown coordinate system. Here, I need to give, I need to give some of the coordinate system. So that's why I have to select. 
when i am selecting i am getting two options over here geographic coordinate system or projected coordinate system so i am going to the geographic coordinate system inside it there is world and inside the world there is wgs 1984 okay so here you can see the geographic coordinate system of that one is selected once we have selected the spatial reference only after that we can perform the or we can create a shape file and perform the digitization similarly earlier if you have done the georeferencing you remember that in the transformation settings we have to give the coordinate system over there so this is what the spatial reference is whenever you are using any spatial data whenever you are creating any spatial data the spatial reference is mandatory without that you cannot how will you refer a particular location on the earth if you do not give all this information so that's why we have to give this information so that any place can be properly recognized now coming to the second category which is a rectangular coordinate system or you can say a planar coordinate system or a projected coordinate system as you can see in this software like if i go to this software again so there are two options we have discussed the first option which is a projected coordinate sorry geographic coordinate system the next option is the projected coordinate system so when we take the projected coordinate system in that case you will get utm over here projected means in this the spherical earth ellipsoidal earth is projected on to a flat surface if you have to compute area distance length perimeter all these will be computed on a flat surface so that's why we need to move to the projected coordinate system one of the most popular one is the utm coordinate system that we have already learned there are other options also over here this state plane coordinate system we have already seen some of the example earlier so at present most of the spatial data available for use in gis exist in two dimensional form in order to make use of these data a referencing system that uses a regular co rectangular coordinate system is used to obtain these a map graticule or grid is placed on the top of the map this graticule is obtained by projecting the line of latitude and longitude from our representation of the world as a globe onto a flat surface using a map projection a good example of rectangular coordinate system is the uk ordnance survey national grid system another example is universal transverse mercator or utm plane grid system so these are the two ways this one is the geographic coordinate system in which any location will be represented in terms of latitude and longitude second thing is projected coordinate system so this one is the example of this uh, united kingdom united kingdom ordinance department planar data and uh, one more thing that when you see the data set over here when you see the data set over here like this one is the projected coordinate system one thing that you should observe that uh, at the lower right corner you can see the value is given in terms of meter okay and earlier when i was taking the example of prayagraj in this case okay in this case the values are coming in decimal degrees again you can see it over here the value is coming on in decimal degree so this is one of the way how you can recognize the thing that whether it is a it is in a geographic coordinate system or is it in a planar coordinate system or a projected coordinate system so one of the ways that you can check how the coordinates or how the location is coming whether it is coming in decimal degree or whether it is coming in meters okay coming to the third one this one is the non coordinate system and this one is a very simple thing you know in this one this one you can say that it is uh, a little bit informal way of explaining things like 
the geography coordinate system and projected coordinate system both are the proper or a formal manner in which we express the geographic uh, spatial referencing of any data set but non case of non coordinate system how this is done like suppose there is some pin code like at mnit our pin code is 211004 okay so when i say 211004 there is a certain area like uh, mnit telier ganj govindpur salori all this region nearby these all are the name of nearby wards and they all are covered by this particular pin code so this is a non coordinate system non coordinate system provide spatial referencing using a descriptive code rather than a coordinate for example postal code another example you can take is like there is a cluster name okay or there is some village like as it is mentioned in the next section that there is certain aggregation unit like in our country the smallest aggregation unit is villages or in the city area it is ward so this is how we are aggregated so when i am saying any name again it is a non coordinate system so other non coordinate uh, coordinate referencing system is used are based on administrative areas for example units used for aggregation and presentation of population census data in different countries for referencing within small areas unique feature reference may be used for instance the property reference number used by a local authority or the pipeline reference used by utility company so this is how the non coordinate system works okay again another an example you can see on the screen over here that this one is the example of uk so first there is unit post code then postal sector then postal district then postal area okay so this is a non coordinate system of expressing any of the location but formally when we do the spatial referencing we go either for the geographic coordinate system or projected coordinate system next thing is when we express the data first thing is the spatial referencing after that another one is topology okay topology works when we use the vector data in that case topology comes into the play so what is topology as we have remembered earlier when we are just reading some of the book chapters in our very initial classes when very few students have joined this course so you people remember that we have discussed about the topology so in that book chapter we have learned what was the topology over there that when you place something on a rubber sheet like something you draw on a rubber sheet and if you try to stretch that thing in that case whatever properties that are not getting changed they will come under the topology okay broadly we can say three things adjacency connectivity and containment first is adjacency suppose two polygons are drawn nearby they are sharing a common boundary just wait so what i have done i have opened one of village map of prayagraj and you can see some of the polygons are just sharing the common boundary you must have done the digitization task that was given to you in that one you have to digitize the complete administrative boundary of prayagraj okay so i hope you people are working on that one district boundary and tehsil boundary of prayagraj in that one you can see that there are adjacent tehsils or in this case you can see that there are villages that are sharing a common boundary and if you draw this thing on a rubber sheet this whole diagram on the rubber sheet and if you try to stretch that one it will not happen that this particular boundary will be get removed or something else they will get distorted the area will get distorted the distance will get distorted but the adjacency 
will remain same. Okay. This is one of the topological property. So another thing is containment. Okay. Like suppose this point, these points are contained inside this polygon or this particular, this one point is contained inside this polygon. Now, if you again try to stretch, bend or whatever you want to do with the rubber sheet, but you just you do not need to cut that rubber sheet. Even after that, that point, this particular school will remain inside this village. It is not going to jump out if you try to stretch the rubber sheet. OK, so this is another pro property which is called the containment. If something is placed inside the another thing, one geometry is placed another inside another bigger geometry. And if you are doing this type of stretching operation in that, that case, it will remain inside that polygon or inside that object. The third one is connectivity. Okay. The roads are connected to each other. As you can see that these roads are connected to each other. Again, if I try to do anything like uh, stretching the rubber sheet, even in that case, it will get the length will get changed of these streets, but they remain connected after that. So these three properties, connectivity, containment and adjacency are three of the topological properties. And they remain same. So many times in a data set we use to maintain a topology of that data. The vector data. Uh, remember this thing the topology is associated with the vector data and later on in upcoming lectures we will learn about the vector data structure so in that data structure you will learn one more data structure inside that one this topological data structure in which we use to store the information which one is based on the left hand side of a polygon which one is based on the right hand side polygon which nodes are connected to each other, which lines are connected to each other. So, so this is the topological property. In a very simple way, if I say what is topological properties, all those properties that remain same. If you try to stretch, if you try to bend, or basically if you try to change the scale, those properties are called the topological data properties. Next topic is about the sources of spatial data. In the sources of spatial data, first one was the map. We have already covered the map topic in a very much detail. Second one is the land surveying. Okay. Land surveying means this one is a very traditional way in which the measurements are made. And if you uh, if you belong from the civil engineering background, you are very well aware of these techniques which are mentioned on the screen. Triangulation, traversing, offset, trial attrition. And we are not covering these topics over here. We are just telling you that the land surveying is one of the ways which the spatial data is collected. It is a traditional way of collecting the data. Like, you know, when the survey of India in any other topographical map, basically they are performing the land survey. They have to survey the whole area and only after that the output will be given to you. So they were using the triangulation method and through that they have covered the whole country. So this is one of the traditional ways to which the data could be collected. Nowadays, over the time, a lot of advancement has been made in the uh, data collection. Like initially we use this uh, um, measuring tapes to measure everything. Nowadays we have laser range finder. There is a laser ray and it will automatically measure the whole distance. So yes, there are the advancement in the instrument, but this is one of the traditional way through which data would be collected. Second manner is by using uh, administrative survey and census data. You know, these data set will not give you directly all the spatial data, but they will give you some amount of data. Like uh, basically they help you to create the attribute data of any spatial data. 
what is attribute data any data that is explaining the characteristic of any of the location it will be the attribute data in our country also you know we have to put a lot of data or the government used to take a lot of data from the citizen like suppose there is some at some place there is a child birth so you have to register that child birth okay everyone have a birth certificate with you isn't it so when we are getting a birth certificate what we are getting we are basically informing the government about a child again similarly if somebody dies then we have to take a death certificate this is the information again which is collected by the government so these all are the information which are collected by the government routinely there is birth re registration marriage registration death registration vehicle registration all these data are given to the government so this is one of the way through which data is collected time to time there is a lot of survey okay like uh, you know there is a health survey after every uh, one year or some interval of time there is national health survey even i may have that you know okay i will find it then i will show you i thought this so there is a national health survey also in which government is giving us the data of the health like all the information about the health how many uh, child are uh, you know malnutrition how many of the women and children are anemic how many are having hypertension how many are getting vaccinated properly child vaccination status and other things then the last one is the census data again it will give you the information of the people it is basically one of the way of collecting the whole soul demographic data which have a lot of lot of fields over there so it is not just the number of people it is not just a count of the people but along with that there is a lot of other data like house ownership information whether a person has his own house or not electricity connection information drinking water availability or not type of occupation all this information your education level all this information is collected by the census data so these are the different different types of data that are collected by the government and they are basically one of the way through which we are getting the spatial data okay now we will continue to this topic but first i am giving you 10 minutes break and we will assemble together at 12 o'clock okay so 10 minutes break and then i will continue to the next data set
So let's start the class again. Let's start the class again. And we were previously discussing about the different types of data that we can get. Okay. So as you can see over here, I have opened the National Family Health Survey for 2015-16 state fact sheet Uttar Pradesh. Okay. So this one is a short one, but here you can see they are giving you aggregate information, key indicators of the Uttar Pradesh, like the maternal health and care, all the information related to that one. Okay. Then other other indicators like nutrition status, anemia, blood sugar level, hypertension, okay. knowledge of HIV, women empowerment, gender-based violence, tobacco use, alcohol consumption. So this one is the whole fact sheet of the health which is provided at the state level. Further, if you search, you can get this information at the district level also. So this is what I was earlier telling you that the government is collecting, is used to collect the data from different sources and they will give you the spatial data. Another thing was census data. Okay, I will give you the example of census data. If you go to the Census of India website, any one of you can download the data of your study area. Like this one is the data of Alaba. Okay. Now, if you see this data set, the starting columns, state, district, sub-district, town, village, they are giving the code of that location. Every village has a unique code. When we take the census data, the census of India gives a unique code to every village of the country. So as you can see, it, first there will be a state code, then district code, then sub-district code, Okay, sub district means Tehsil over here, as you can see, sub district Sorau. Okay, so this one is the Tehsil, and after that, you can find the name of all the villages. If you are interested in your district, you can also download all this information and you can see how many villages are there, what are the name of the villages, and all the other things. But further, if I see that it will give you the level, then number of household, total population, total population male, total population female, population in the age group of 0 to 6, scheduled caste population person, scheduled caste population male, scheduled caste population female, scheduled tribe population in person, then male female, then literate population, then male, female, illiterate population, male, female, total worker population. Just try to get how many things are collected during the census. Okay. So total worker, total worker, male, female, main working population, male, female, main cultivator. Okay. Then male, main agricultural laborers. When main household industry population, so many, so many fields are over here and you can find the whole data set. Now if I am just drag it out. <clears throat> there are total 186 column in this data set. Okay, so there are 186 column for a single village in which this data is collected. They serve as one of the major source of data when we work because they help us to give the attribute data of any of the region. Okay, So these are the different administrative survey and census data that we were discussing. After that, another source of spatial data can be the aerial photographs. So you must learning about these things in the remote sensing and in the next semester in image processing. But all the remote sensing data, whether it is the imaging, whether it is a LIDAR data, whether it is a SAR data, SAR data means synthetic aperture radar data, all these data serves as the input data to the GIS. Okay. 
if we talk about the aerial photography aerial photography is one of the very earlier method of getting the data and if you see the development of the photography you will find that a major development has took place during the world war 2 because there is a lot of innovation at that time the countries want to capture the details spy on the other countries that's why there is a lot of development in the field of imaging in the field of aerial photography in the field of photogrammetry in the field of radar also these all are the major major means world war 2 has a major milestone for the development of all these things in the aerial photography you can get a snapshot of any place okay so when we talk about the snapshot it means that it can capture whatever is present at a particular moment okay like suppose if you want to see uh, you know if you want to assess how much damage has been done to the agriculture field due to the flood so what you will do for that thing you need to have the snapshot of that particular time only then you can identify how much damage has been done now that ground data can be collected in two ways first one is aerial photography second way you can go for the satellite imaging okay the problem with satellite uh, sorry aerial photography is that the platform is not that much stable means if somebody ask you what is the difference between the aerial photography and the satellite photography so one of the problem we compare both the imaging techniques when we have a satellite system okay when we are having a satellite imaging the platform is very stable but if you have any aerial photography you need to mount the camera on something whether it is any helicopter some plane nowadays there is uav drones and other things there is a lot of lot of innovation and work going on in the field of uav right now so if you see the aerial photography the platform on which the cameras are mounted are quite unstable so that's why there is there are different type of distortion later on you will learn about the distortion in remote sensing as well as in image processing this is not a part of gis but you will learn that there is a lot of distortion that will take place there is no pitch your because of the instability of the platform but the, if you go to the positive part why we go for the aerial photography if there is so many problems the answer is that you can capture the thing as per your requirement it means that you can customize the whole process in case of satellite images you cannot customize the thing whatever is the revisit period of the satellite you will get the data only at that time like Uh, the landsat data is free that's why we use landsat data a lot the revisit period is 16 days okay. now if you cap try to capture the data during august september like today there is a little bit cloudy and suppose there is a today the landsat will capture the data you will not get a proper data today why what is the problem with the forecast situation and cloud will be there so how that will appear it will appear white yes if there is any cloud then you cannot see what is present on the ground you will just see a uh, you know some patch white patch over there because there is a cloud the the you know optical range cannot penetrate through the cloud if there is a radar or if there is a in uh, in case of lidar also they can penetrate through the cloud but when you have this optical range rgb near infrared nothing can penetrate through the cloud so what will happen you can see a patch of cloud over there nothing will be visible and the ground level so when some of the student have done th this uh, you know this uh, flooding analysis on the on a, on their study area one of the major problem was that that uh, like suppose they are capturing the data during the dry season there was no problem after that they are trying to capture the data during the rainy season so that they can identify how much area is getting filled with water during the rainy season which was not there earlier in the dry season so what they were doing they were taking the data of say june july august after the rain or during the rainy season every time the student faces the same problem 
that there is a lot of cloud on that day and they cannot get the data of that particular day. Like suppose I want the data of August. At most, there will be two days at which the Landsat data, at which the Landsat capture the image because the revisit period is 16 days. So if it is capturing the data of say 1st of August, second will be the 17th of August. That's it. So there will be only two days on which the data will get captured. So if there is a uh, cloudy on cloudy condition on 1st of August as well as on 17th of August, the data could not get captured for the whole August month. So this is what the problem with the satellite images also, although it is a very good source, we are getting the data, but the problem is you cannot customize that thing. In case of aerial photography, the resolution is very good and the flying height could get adjusted over here. OK, you must know about the relationship between the flight height and the ground scale. As you. Means as you decrease the height, you will find that lesser area will be covered, but with more detail, like at the 500 meter, only this small square will get. Captured if you move to the one kilometer. The middle square will get captured. If you move to the one and a half kilometer, the larger square will get captured. This is what the thing is with the aerial photography. Next thing is you can see the different different characteristics over here, like wide availability of data. Lower cost if you compare this data with the satellite images. You know, you, if you are getting a satellite image, you have to purchase that satellite image from some company. So the cost of that one is quite high as compared to the aerial photographs. Then next one is the wide area views. Then time teasing abilities. If you want to capture a data on a particular date at a particular time, then you can freeze that time as per your requirement. It means that you can customize the whole process. Higher spectral and spatial resolution. So all these things can get adjusted with the aerial photograph, but you need certain, you know, there is more that there will be a little bit more distortion. There will be instability of the platform, but it can provide you the customized output as per your requirement. The another option for this, I have already covered it. This one is the satellite imaging. So in this case, the sensors are placed on a satellite and they will relay to the Earth as a series of electronic signals. So this is how the data is captured in the remote sensing or in satellite images. There are several options for the satellites. And nowadays we are getting a very, very high resolution satellite images up to centimeter level. We are getting a resolution. So whatever is present on the ground, it can be very much clearly visible to us. These are the example of passive sensor. What is active sensor and what is passive sensor? Well, active sensor has own uh, energy. And a passive sensor is dependent upon the uh, like sun uh, natural energy. Yes, so active sensor has its own energy source. Like suppose if you are using a camera with a flash, OK? If you are if you want to capture your image at the night time, so you cannot if there is no light source over there, what you will do, you will open the flash and you will capture the image along with the flash. So this one will be the example of active remote sensing. Or if you are using a LIDAR data, so what will happen in LIDAR? The laser pulse will be emitted by the instrument and they will get captured. Again, the instrument or the sensor has its own energy source through which the data is captured. Similarly, in case of SAR, there will be a microwave or in case of radar, there will be a microwave that is used over there. But other than that, if you use any of the satellite image other than that, like suppose if I use the Sentinel data or the Landsat data, all are the example of passive remote sensing. In this case, they need 
a separate light source. They depend upon other light source and most of the cases it is sun. They depend upon the light of the sun so that they can sense any of the data. That's why they are known as the passive remote sensing. So if you see the advantages which are listed over here, low cost relative to other data sources. Okay. Their accuracy is quite more. Completeness of data. Completeness of data means that if you take the aerial photograph, it will be a very small portion on which the remote sensing can be done, on which the data could get captured. But when we have a satellite image, in that case, the whole Earth could get captured. That's why they are saying the completeness of data set. Then uniform standards across an area of interest. The satellite system is based on a well-defined standards. Okay, You will not find the variation in this whole mission. That's why the standards are very uniform. Like suppose if you are taking two different countries data. In that case, first of all, the area photography could not work because you cannot go to the other. Like suppose if you have one study area in India and another study area, say some nearby country, say Myanmar. So you cannot go to the Myanmar and do all this task. So you can go, but if you have that much amount of budget. In that case, what we will do, we will take the satellite data because everything or whole of the uh, almost most of the places of the earth are captured by that one. So the completeness of data is there, the uniform standards are there. Therefore, the satellite images are quite preferred. Can you name some of the Indian satellite satellites that give you the images? Ma'am, resource set uh, two uh, under that uh, three sensor are there, list four, list three, and AVIPS. Anything else? And uh, CARTO set, CART, CARTO set three, ma'am. That give high resolution especially data. That is around 30 centimeters. Yes. So these are some of the Indian satellite series. All of you just by yourself go to the internet and search about the Indian satellite series. Yes, as a student of GIS, as a student of remote sensing, all of you must know some of the Indian satellite series. One of the very popular name is Cartosat. Earlier we have the list data set and other things. Most of the time when we talk about the satellite, it is some other country satellite like Landsat, Sentinel, MODIS data we are using a lot nowadays. So these all are not of Indian satellite series. <clears throat> Many times it happens that students do not at all know any of the Indian satellite name. Our country is doing very well and there are several satellites that you will find that are giving you the satellite images. Okay, So this one is your task. Go to the internet and search about the name of different Indian satellite series. Okay, And when you are doing this task, make sure that you are noting down the year of launch also. Year of the launch and the resolution at which the product is provided or the images are provided. Okay. This map or this figure is showing some of the details. You can read it by yourself. They are providing the temporal resolution, spatial resolution, name of the different satellite sensors over here. Okay. Now I'm coming back to our topic, which is the attribute data. Till now we have discussed a lot about the spatial data, about the sources of spatial data. In that sources, there are the attribute data sources also. Okay. Now, before starting this one, all of you do one thing. Write down two terms, spatial data and attribute data in your copy. And try to give the definition of both. Since we are discussing about these two terms on a regular basis, 
just see how many of you are not able to define these two things okay i am not asking who is not able but it is like self inspection it's like an introspection like how many of you are able to define these two basic terms because we are discussing about them in our each lecture almost in every lecture we have discussed about the spatial data and attribute data so how you will search that whether you are able to answer this one or not write down the definition in your own notebook open your copy and try to write down the definition of spatial data and attribute data i will give the definition but you yourself try whether you are able to answer this question or not spatial data and attribute data all of you must have written it down the first one was the spatial data what is a spatial data anything that provide you the location okay so first one spatial data means it's a location data what is location data it can be in terms of longitude and latitude so it can be in terms of longitude longitude and latitude or it can be in terms of x comma y so this is how the spatial data is given spatial data is the location data it will be given in terms of longitude and latitude or x and y when we talk about the attribute data what is attribute data attribute data is the information about the uh, spatial data attribute data will be the characteristic of that location okay how will you find the location it is the spatial data that will give you the location what will the attribute data will give the characteristic of that location will be given by the attribute data so both the data are related to each other it is not like both are independent they do not have to do anything with each other okay both are related to each other till now we were discussing about the spatial data sources whether it is a map or it is uh, say satellite image aerial images whatever there it is they all are the different example of spatial data sources that you can capture next thing is when suppose if i am saying that you know that there is this school if i am placing my cursor over here you can see its value is given at the bottom right corner it is 81.884 and 25.443 so its longitude and latitude value this one is what this is the spatial information and then if i click on this one and a table will up will appear in front of me as you can see this information the code the school code is given over here 
This one is the attribute information. The name of the school, P. S. Mori Daraganj. This one is the attribute information. Then block, Nagar Shetra, village, da Daraganj. Number of male teacher two, female teacher zero, total teacher two. Boys is student twenty seven, girls is student thirty seven, total student sixty four. All this information is the attribute information that is associated with that. Okay. Now, I will take another simple example. Wherever you are sitting, okay. Wherever you are sitting, try to write down your own. Spatial information or spatial data as well as the attribute data. Like, suppose if I am creating a layer of students, okay? Suppose I am creating a layer of students, then what will be the spatial data and what will be the attribute data? Write down in a copy. Yes, Shivam. Shivam. Okay. Ruchi. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Ruchi, what will be the spatial data and attribute data for the students there? Sorry, ma'am, I don't know. 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 I Ruchi, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Is for deco, 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 is for And number of students. Number of class. students special data kaise hoga? Dekho special data kya aage kya likha hua hai? Hmm, longitude ne Location data likha hua hai na? Longitude yes, location likha hai. Haan, Ruchi, bolo. Jee, ma'am location to uh, class hogi. Thik hai, chalo. Attribute data kya hoga? Characteristics. Hmm. Ma'am, uh, number of students who will class with me. Ma'am, who is. Okay. Or tell me. Next, Praveen. Yes, ma'am. आप बताइए attribute attribute data में होता है number of male student and number of female student चलो और बताओ हम अपने class की बात कर रहे हैं यहाँ पर इस meeting में 15 students हैं अभी right now तो इन 15 students के लिए आप attribute data क्या दोगे और special data क्या दोगे attribute data में मैं मतलब present student male और present student in female और और
चलो नेक्स्ट पारुल यस मैम सो मैम स्पार्शियल डेटा में स्टूडेंट एड्रेस हो जाएगा स्टूडेंट कॉलेज लोकेशन हो जाएगा लाइक बी टेक कॉलेज लोकेशन हाँ एंड मैम एट्रीब्यूट डेटा में स्टूडेंट्स uh, की जो बी के कोर्स uh, uh, जो सब्जेक्ट था वो हो सकता है और रिसर्च इंटरेस्ट नंबर ऑफ मेल फीमेल ये एट्रीब्यूट डेटा हो जाएंगे और सिटी हो सकता है कि फ्रॉम वेयर दे बिलोंग एट्रीब्यूट डेटा में स्टूडेंट सिटी रेसिडेंस सभी स्टूडेंट्स को एक सजेशन अगर कभी भी लगे क्लास नहीं समझ में आ रही है हमको या पढ़ाया हुआ बिल्कुल सर के ऊपर से निकल जा रहा है आप उसको इमीडिएटली पूछा करिए ठीक है इसको हम हर बार आपको यही कहते हैं आप पूछेंगे नहीं तो हमें पता नहीं लगेगा स्टूडेंट हमारे सामने बैठता है तो हम उसके एक्सप्रेशन देख करके थोड़ा बहुत एक जज कर सकते हैं कि स्टूडेंट को समझ में आ रहा है या नहीं समझ आ रहा या इस टॉपिक को हमें रिपीट करने की जरूरत है बट ऑनलाइन मोड में तो आप हमको दिखते ही नहीं है है ना सामने हमारी स्क्रीन खुली रहती है स्टूडेंट हमको दिखता नहीं है अगर आप अपने से इनिशिएटिव लेकर के नहीं पूछेंगे तो फिर आपका लॉस है और पूछने में बिल्कुल हेजिटेशन नहीं क्योंकि आपको नहीं आ रहा एटलीस्ट आपको ये तो पता है कि आपको नहीं आ रहा बाकी क्लास में कितने लोगों को नहीं आ रहा है वो बोलने की हिम्मत नहीं कर रहे और दो ना पूछने का कोई कारण मुझे नहीं समझ में आता जबकि बार बार हर बार कहते हैं आपको कि नहीं समझ में तुरंत पूछो क्योंकि सारी चीजें आपस से आपस में रिलेटेड होती है ओके ऐसा नहीं है कि आपने एक चीज अगर नहीं समझी तो कोई म्यूट पर नहीं है म्यूट कर लीजिए जो भी म्यूट पर नहीं है यस सो क्लास में जरूर से पूछा करके कि अगर कोई चीज आपको नहीं समझ में आ रही है पूछेंगे तो वो चीज सीख जाएंगे नहीं पूछेंगे तो एक बार शुरुआत का जब चीजें पीछे छूटती जाती हैं तो आगे का भी सब्जेक्ट समझ नहीं आता फिर इंटरेस्ट नहीं आएगा उसमें बहुत बेसिक चीजें हैं ये रिकॉर्डिंग आपके पास में अवेलेबल है आप रिकॉर्डिंग फिर से सुन करके देख सकते हैं समझ सकते हैं तब भी नहीं समझ में आए तो आप क्लास में पूछ सकते हैं एक टॉपिक को चाहे जितनी बार आपको रिपीट कराना हो आप उसको बार बार पूछ सकते हैं उसका कोई दिक्कत नहीं है लेकिन बिना समझे हुए किसी टॉपिक को अगर बैठ जाएंगे आज तो फ्यूचर में जब इसी का अब जैसे अगले लेक्चर में हम लोग जाते जाते हम लोग इसका रास्टल वैक्टर पढ़ना शुरू कर देंगे वो स्पेशल डेटा का अगला लेवल ऑफ डिटेल होगा तो अगर बेसिक लेवल ही नहीं समझ में आया कि अब आज की डेट में अगर आप जोग्राफिक कोऑर्डिनेट सिस्टम एंड प्रोजेक्टेड कोऑर्डिनेट सिस्टम इतने सारे डिस्कशन के बाद नहीं बता पाएंगे तब तो आपको आगे के सब जगह दिक्कत है कि आप जो लेबोरेटरी करेंगे उसमें आपको नहीं समझ में आएगा कि आखिर ये हो क्या रहा है ये पर्टिकुलर ऑप्शन सेलेक्ट क्यों कर लिया गया केवल क्लास लेक्चर ही नहीं आपको जो बुक दी गई है उसको जरूर से पढ़िए यान हेवोट की बुक जो ऑलरेडी अपलोडेड है वहां पर उसको पढ़िए क्योंकि जब आप बुक पढ़ते हैं तो एक एक सीक्वेंस में बहुत ही बैकग्राउंड से वो चीजें समझ में आती हैं बहुत अच्छे एग्जांपल्स के साथ में वो बुक दी गई है उसमें हैप्पी वैली एक रिसोर्ट का एग्जांपल लेकर के हर एक चैप्टर में उसको लेकर के एक्सप्लेन किया गया है इस कारण से वो बुक आपको दी गई है तो अगर नहीं भी समझ में आ रहा है कोई क्लास में चीज और आपको लग रहा है कि हम इसको पढ़ करके क्लियर कर लेंगे तो उसको ऐसा मत सोचे कि मैं हफ्ते दस दिन बाद उसको क्लियर करूंगा या करूंगी उसको इमीडिएटली क्लियर करिए क्योंकि वो सब चीज सिक्वेंशियल वे में चल रही है एक लिंक टूटेगा तो आगे का सारा चीजें डिस्टर्ब्ड होंगी वापस से टॉपिक देखते हैं यहाँ पर क्वेश्चन पूछा गया था सपोज यहाँ पर हमारे पास स्टूडेंट्स हैं सपोज सिक्सटीन स्टूडेंट्स हैं एट प्रेजेंट इस क्लास में सो वॉट विल बी द स्पेशल डेटा वॉट विल बी द एट्रीब्यूट डेटा ओके सो इस केस में हमारे पास में जब हम बोलते हैं व्हाट इज दी स्पेशल डेटा इन दैट केस द लोकेशन ऑफ दी स्टूडेंट विल बिकम दी स्पेशल डेटा स्क्रीन पर ये क्लियरली लिखा हुआ है तभी बोल रहे थे कि देखो स्क्रीन देखो सब लोग आप उसमें लिखा क्या है इसमें क्लियरली लिखा है कि स्पेशल डेटा मींस इट्स अ लोकेशन डेटा व्हाट विल बी द लोकेशन ऑफ अ स्टूडेंट बिकॉज एट प्रेजेंट स्टूडेंट कोई किसी क्लासरूम के अंदर नहीं बैठे हैं सारे स्टूडेंट अपने अपने घर में अपने सिस्टम के सामने बैठे हुए हैं है ना सो so, क्लासरूम कैन नॉट बी अ स्पेशल डेटा राइट नाउ लोकेशन ऑफ स्टूडेंट आप जिस भी जगह पर हैं वेदर यू आर इन इलाहाबाद जौनपुर वाराणसी बैंगलोर डेली वेर एवर यू आर असाइडिंग आपका जो लोकेशन है 
आपका जो पोजिशन उसका जो लैटीट्यूड लॉन्गिट्यूड होगा वो स्पेशल डेटा होगा लैटीट्यूड लॉन्गिट्यूड ना कह करके अगर इसको सिंप्लीफाई करना चाहें कि भाई आपका जो भी सिटी का नेम हो गया सपोज वो आपने उसको लोकेशन मान लिया क्योंकि वैसे फॉर्मली जब हम जीआईएस में स्टोर करेंगे तो जैसे अभी आपको स्कूल का एग्जाम्पल दिखाया गया था उसी तरीके से स्टूडेंट का जो एक एक स्टूडेंट होगा वो पॉइंट के फॉर्म में स्टोर किया जाएगा उसका जो कॉर्डिनेट होगा एक्स वाई कॉर्डिनेट और लैटीट्यूड लॉन्गिट्यूड जो होगा वो स्पेशल डेटा बनाएगा अगला चीज उसमें एट्रीब्यूट डेटा क्या बनेगा स्टूडेंट का एट्रीब्यूट क्या होता है इनरोलमेंट नंबर नेम है ना पेरेंट्स नेम फादर नेम मदर नेम डेट ऑफ बर्थ ठीक है सीपीआई क्यूमुलेटिव प्रोग्रेस इंडेक्स एसपीआई सेमेस्टर प्रोग्रेस इंडेक्स ये सारा चीजें आपके रिजल्ट में आता है आपका आप लोग शायद पहले से ही अगर ग्रेडिंग सिस्टम से आ रहे हैं तो वहां पर परसेंटेज की जगह सेमेस्टर के लिए एसपीआई और टोटल के लिए सीपीआई निकलता है तो ये सारा इंफॉर्मेशन स्टूडेंट नेम एनरोलमेंट नंबर डेट ऑफ बर्थ सीपीआई ये सारी चीजें क्या होंगी ये सारी उस स्टूडेंट के लिए एट्रीब्यूट का काम करेंगी अब समझ में आया स्पेशल डेटा एट्रीब्यूट डेटा कैसे बनेगा कोई डाउट है किसी को तो वो पूछ लीजिए ओके okay. सपोज हम लोग सभी इंस्टीट्यूट के जितने भी फैकल्टी हैं ठीक है थीके? उसका अब अगर हम लोग ये सारा चीजें रिपीट करें उसी चीज को अभी स्टूडेंट के लिए कर रहे थे अब फैकल्टी के लिए यही बात रिपीट करते हैं स्पेशल और एट्रीब्यूट डेटा क्या होगा अभिजीत यस मैम यस बताइए मैम फिर से क्वेश्चन रिपीट कर अगर हम एम एन के सभी फैकल्टीज के लिए ये स्पेशल डेटा और एट्रीब्यूट डेटा पूछे तो स्पेशल डेटा क्या होगा फैकल्टी के लिए और एट्रीब्यूट डेटा क्या होगा फैकल्टी का स्पेशल डेटा होगा फैकल्टी का नेम सब्जेक्ट डॉट ये सब क्या होगा स्पेशल डेटा अब जी तब भी मैंने पूरी की पूरी चीज रिपीट किया फिर कोई गलत बात बोल रहा हो आप देखो स्क्रीन देखो क्या लिखा है आप क्लासेस रेगुलरली करते हैं कि नहीं यस सर। ओके। चलिए स्क्रीन पर देखिए और फिर अपने आंसर को रिपीट करिए बताइए सारे फैकल्टीज अगर हम फैकल्टी का इसी तरीके से डेटा बनाए अभी जैसे स्टूडेंट का डिस्कस किया उसके लिए स्पेशल डेटा क्या होगा और एट्रीब्यूट डेटा क्या होगा जल्दी जल्दी बताइए अभिजीत जो समझ में आ रहा है वही बताइए अभिजीत आपका ऑडियो नहीं आ रहा है मुझे कोई अगर आप बोल रहे हैं तो मैम लैटीट्यूड लॉन्गिट्यूड ऑफ द प्लेस इन विच दे आर टीचिंग हम्म यस यस अभिजीत हां कंटिन्यू करिए एट्रीब्यूट डेटा क्या होगा यस अभिजीत एट्रीब्यूट डेटा क्या होगा एटीट्यूड नहीं पता अभिजीत तो बोलिए 
ठीक है अभिजीत क्लास को ध्यान से अटेंड करिए क्योंकि अभी पूरा चीज मैंने रिपीट किया है और जो आप लोग को बोलते हैं कि आफ्टर फुल सेमेस्टर के बाद भी कई बार ऐसा होता है कि स्टूडेंट ये आंसर नहीं देता कि व्हाट इज स्पेशल डेटा एंड एट्रीब्यूट डेटा तो क्लास पे ध्यान रखाइए ठीक है क्योंकि ये अभी क्योंकि पूरा का पूरा सेम चीज स्टूडेंट के रेफरेंस में डिस्कस किया और पूछा कि नहीं समझ आया तो फिर से बताएंगे क्लास पे ध्यान दीजिए ओके नेक्स्ट आलोक कुमार यस मैम आलोक कुमार आप बताइए मैम स्पेशल डाटा या फिर एट्रीब्यूट डाटा दोनों बताइए मैम स्पेशल डाटा होगा एम कॉलेज की लोकेशन जहाँ पे वो पढ़ाते हैं ठीक है और एट्रीब्यूट डाटा में उनका नेम सब्जेक्ट कौन सा पढ़ाते हैं हाइट वेट स्टाफ नंबर मैम एनीथिंग डिस्क्रिप्टिव इन नेचर ठीक ओके ओके आलोक थैंक यू गुड सो दिस इज व्हाट अबाउट दी स्पेशल डेटा एंड एट्रीब्यूट डेटा आप सभी लोगों का आज का परफॉर्मेंस देख करके एक क्विज हम शेड्यूल कर रहे हैं वेनजडे को ओके लेक्चर आपको आपके पास सारे नोट्स लेक्चर के अवेलेबल हैं वो लेक्चर नोट्स और आपके पास यान हेवट की बुक है ठीक है उन सबको लेकर के प्रॉपरली अपने क्विज के लिए प्रिपेयर करिए जहां तक आज का लेक्चर हो जाएगा मीन्स आज एट्रीब्यूट डेटा हम कंप्लीट करेंगे सो so, यहाँ तक का पूरा क्विज में आएगा वेनेसडे को ये क्विज रहेगी आपके अगर कोई बैचमेट अगर आज नहीं आया है क्योंकि कुछ पीएचडी में शायद सिविल के स्टूडेंट्स आज मिसिंग है सो so, सभी लोग को इन्फॉर्म कर दीजिएगा कि वेनेसडे को क्विज है क्विज में जरूर अपियर करिएगा क्योंकि जैसे आप लोग को पहले बता चुके हैं जो मिड सेमेस्टर का मार्क्स है आप लोग का जो टोटल मार्क्स बनेगा वो आउट ऑफ हंड्रेड बनेगा जिसमें 60 मार्क्स एंड सेमेस्टर एग्जामिनेशन से होते हैं 20 मार्क्स मिड सेमेस्टर एग्जामिनेशन से होते हैं रिमेनिंग मार्क्स 20 टीचर्स असेसमेंट के होते हैं जो इसी तरीके के डे टू डे क्वेश्चन आंसरिंग जो होती है उससे बनते हैं आपकी अटेंडेंस से बनते हैं आपको जो असाइनमेंट दिए जाएंगे उससे बनते हैं है ना जो ट्वेंटी मार्क्स मिड सेमेस्टर का बोला वो जो ये क्विजेस होती है क्योंकि मिड सेमेस्टर अगर फिजिकल मोड में क्लासेस चलते तो वो तो रिटर्न एग्जामिनेशन होता है मिड सेमेस्टर का इसमें जो क्विजेस होती हैं वो सारी क्विज आपकी होकर के उसका टोटल होकर के आउट ऑफ ट्वेंटी उसको स्केल किया जाता है तो अगर आप किसी क्विज में नहीं आते हैं तो सीधे सीधे उसमें जीरो होकर के वो काउंट होता है तो सभी को बोल दीजिएगा अपने बैच में अगर कोई आज नहीं है सभी लोग वेनेसडे के क्विज में जरूर से आइएगा ठीक है क्विज का कंटेंट आपको बता दिया जितना भी आपको लेक्चर नोट्स मिला है लेक्चर नोट वन से लेकर के आज फोर्थ वाला पीडीएफ चल रहा है ये पीडीएफ वन टू थ्री फोर पूरा प्लस यान हेवुड की जो बुक है वो okay? इसको प्रॉपरली प्रिपेयर करके इसको एकदम एग्जाम की तरह ही कंसीडर करिएगा क्योंकि क्विज मतलब क्विज इट्स नॉट जस्ट लाइक ऐसा ही कोई क्विज हो जा रही है ये प्रॉपरली आपकी एम एस टीम्स पर यह क्विज होगी इसमें आपको पूरा ऑप्शन वगैरह सेलेक्ट करने पड़ेंगे इसकी मार्किंग होगी मार्किंग आपके पास रिटर्न भी होकर के जाएगा सारा ठीक है तो इसको प्रॉपर एग्जामिनेशन के लेवल का सीरियसनेस दिखाइएगा को इसमें इसको ऐसे डे टू डे रूटीन एक्टिविटी या रिवीजन एक्टिविटी की तरह मत लीजिएगा क्योंकि ये डायरेक्टली आपके मिड सेमेस्टर मार्क्स में काउंट होता है इनिशियली जैसे लास्ट ईयर भी देखा गया था कई बार स्टूडेंट इसको लाइटली ले लेते हैं शुरुआत में उससे उनका ओवरऑल ग्रेड जो होता है वो खराब हो जाता है क्योंकि मिड सेमेस्टर वाले मार्क्स में जो ट्वेंटी मार्क्स का कॉम्पोनेंट है अगर आपने दो क्विज भी मिस कर दी ठीक है और उसमें आपका जीरो जीरो चला गया तो उसमें ओवरऑल आप जितना भी कर लें वो टोटल मार्क्स में कम हो जाता है ठीक है कोई अटेंड करिएगा प्रॉपरली प्रिपेयर करिएगा फर्स्ट पीडीएफ से लेकर के फोर्थ पीडीएफ तक प्लस यान हेवुड की बुक में जो जो चैप्टर्स कवर हो गए हैं वो आप उसको खोलिएगा उसमें आपको सब मिल जाएगा कमिंग बैक टू दॉपिक डिस्कसिंग अबाउट दूट डेटा यस मैम कितने क्वेश्चन हैं क्वेश्चंस वो तो उसका कोई वो नहीं होता उसमें कितने भी क्वेश्चंस आ सकते हैं सफिशियंट टाइम मिलेगा टाइम का कोई वो नहीं होता कि टाइम आपको कम देकर के ज्यादा क्वेश्चन दिए जाएं जितना रेलेवेंट टाइम होना चाहिए उस क्वेश्चन को सॉल्व करने में उतना पूरा आप लोग को मिलेगा मैम सब्जेक्ट और ऑब्जेक्टिव दोनों हो सकते हैं जैसे मोस्टली ऑब्जेक्टिव रहता है बट सब्जेक्टिव भी होता है दोनों हो सकते हैं 
और कोई क्वेश्चन है क्विज पे तो पूछ लीजिए अदरवाइज फिर हम एट्रीब्यूट स्टार्ट करेंगे मैम वी डोंट नीड टू रिमेंबर द डेट्स राइट सॉरी वी डोंट नीड टू रिमेंबर द डेट्स राइट लॉन्चिंग डेट्स एंड क्यूजीआई सीजीआई डेट्स इयर्स नो भगत यू हैव टू रिमेंबर एवरीथिंग व्हाट एवर इज रिटन इन द पीडीएफ व्हाट एवर इज गिवन इन द ईएन हेवुड बुक व्हाट एवर हैव बीन टॉट ड्यूरिंग द लेक्चर सेशन यू नीड टू रिमेंबर एवरीथिंग nothing irrelevant have been taught to you it is very much focused on the course so there is no need to left anything okay any okay any other question ma'am yes ma'am uh, for the attribute date of faculty can i say some characteristics Mm-hmm. Yes. First of all, we'll take the name of the faculty, and next, uh, uh, relating details like uh, course they teach in the MNIT and course ID, and next uh, uh, years of experience of the faculty in MNIT. Next, uh, educational qualifications uh, before teaching of the faculty. and that's it ma'am yeah it's okay just they are correct thank you ma'am so attribute data are the non spatial data and these data are associated with point line and area entities attribute basically tell you about the characteristic of any of the entity broadly we can say that the geographical attributes are of four type nominal ordinal interval and ratio so we will see it one by one what is nominal data you know nominal data is uh, any data on which you cannot perform the arithmetic operation so this is a very simple type of attribute data and it is used to identify or distinguish one of the entity one of the very common thing is that any of the proper noun will be the nominal data okay then like it is given over here place names are a good example like name of a house number on a driving license plate like if you have a mobile number you cannot perform any arithmetic operation between two mobile number means you can add two mobile number but it will be a senseless thing okay you can divide multiply subtract whatever you want to do you can do that one but you cannot get any sensible output of that one you cannot compare two mobile numbers so such type of data is called the nominal data then the second one is the ordinal data as the name suggests when we say the ordinal data it has an order there will be a ranking in that case so whenever a data have a rank certain order then it will fall as the ordinal data like suppose if i take the happy valley example which is given in the ian hewitt book in a happy valley region there are several cafes okay and suppose there is some website tours and travels website that will provide the rating over there three star rating four star rating or it will give a rank that this one is the best cafe this one is the second best this one is the rank third all this type of data is called the ordinal data ordinal data can be compared you can compare greater than less than equal to other than that you cannot perform any arithmetic operation over there you can perform comparison operation but you cannot perform the arithmetic operation like another example is given on the screen like in canada the government used to rate their agriculture land on the basis of soil quality so if there is a class 1 of any agriculture land then class 1 means the quality will be the best the land will be maximum fertile land if any of the agriculture land is under class 2 then it is not so good class okay so such type of ranking such type of rating they come under the ordinal data third one is the interval data in case of interval data 
you can perform comparison you can perform the addition and subtraction operation over here but the thing is there is no absolute zero and zero doesn't mean the absence of that thing temperature is the example of interval data like if i say 0 degree celsius 0 degree fahrenheit 0 kelvin all are the different measure of temperature but you cannot say that 0 degree celsius is equivalent to 0 degree fahrenheit okay celsius 0 is different fahrenheit 0 is different zero doesn't mean absence if there is a zero degree celsius temperature then it doesn't mean that there is an absence of temperature over there okay one more thing that suppose there is 10 degree celsius and 20 degree celsius temperature we cannot make a statement that 20 degree celsius is twice hotter than the 10 degree celsius so this type of data is called the interval data where the, there is no absolute zero Fourth type of attribute data is the ratio data. In case of ratio data, we have a natural zero over there. Like suppose, if in the Happy Valley there is a measurement of snow depth, okay? So snow depth will be example of, or simply depth is the example of ratio data. If there is zero depth, zero meter, zero centimeter, zero millimeter, whatever zero is, it means that there will be no snow at that place. it means complete absence or if you compare the weight 0 gram 0 kg whatever measurement or whatever unit you are making of the weight zero means absence of that thing okay so such type of data is called ratio data like height depth weight they all have an absolute zero in whichever unit you are measuring zero means absence you can make a comparison you can say that 10 cm and 5 cm so we can say 10 cm is twice bigger than the 5 cm we can say such type of statement if we have a ratio data so broadly the whole data set is divided into four category attribute data can be of four type nominal data in which there is a simple assignment in ordinal data we can perform the comparison in interval data we can perform the comparison we can say that yes 20 degree celsius is hotter than the 10 degree celsius we can perform addition and subtraction over there in case of ratio data we can perform the comparison as well as all the arithmetic operation over there so whenever we store a data whenever we have any of the data set like i have opened the nyc census new york city census block whenever i click on any of the data when i click on any of the data the attribute of that particular thing will get listed like on this particular polygon all the things that you are right now visualizing on the screen this is the attribute data uh this block id total population white population black population all this information is the attribute data and if i ask what is the spatial data of this one just wait so now you can see a list of x and y coordinate of this whole polygon okay this is listed on the right hand side panel you can see this whole list is the spatial data this one is the polygon the x and y coordinate that are making this polygon will give you the location data of this polygon i hope there is no confusion over here jab hum kisi polygon ke upar click kar rahe hain aur uska x and y coordinate jo aap apne screen ke right hand side pe dekh sakte hain ye pura jo list hoga ye ek spatial data banayega ये पूरा 34 पॉइंट्स का ये जो लिस्ट है जो इस पॉलीगन को आइडेंटिफाई करा रहा है ये इसका स्पेशल डेटा है पर जब हम इस पर क्लिक करके यहाँ पर इस पॉलीगन में क्या चीज मौजूद है यहाँ पर कितने लोग रहते हैं उनमें कितने व्हाइट ओरिजिन के हैं कितने ब्लैक हैं कितने नेटिव हैं कितने एशियन है 
टोटल नंबर ऑफ घर यहाँ पर कितने हैं कितने घर ओन्ड है कितने घर रेंटेड है ये किस बरो में आता है मतलब किस ब्लॉक में आता है यहाँ का टोटल एरिया कितना है यहाँ की पॉपुलेशन डेंसिटी कितनी है ये सारा एट्रीब्यूट है और इसमें अगर हम फर्दर देखें अब जैसे ब्लॉक आईडी है तो ब्लॉक आईडी क्या होगा ये एक नॉमिनल डेटा है वाई बिकॉज इसमें एक सिंपली एक नंबर एक ब्लॉक आईडी जो है वो इसको असाइन किया जा रहा है इसी तरीके से जो बरो नेम है ये क्या है ये एक नॉमिनल डेटा है ठीक इसमें ऑर्डिनल डेटा कोई नहीं है देन एरिया ये इसमें रेशियो डेटा का काम करेगा ठीक है इसी तरीके से आप किसी भी डेटा सेट को खोलेंगे हर एक हर एक एंटिटी के करेस्पॉन्डिंग आपको उसका एट्रीब्यूट डेटा मिलेगा यहाँ पर डेटा को पॉलीगन के फॉर्म में स्टोर किया गया था यहाँ पर हमें लाइन के भी फॉर्म में मिल सकता है पॉइंट के भी फॉर्म में मिल सकता है जैसे यहाँ पर एनवाईसी सब स्टेशन है ठीक है तो ये एनवाईसी सब स्टेशन पे जब हम क्लिक कर रहे हैं और हमारे सामने जो लिस्ट आ जा रही है ये उसका एट्रीब्यूट डेटा है लेकिन इसका लोकेशन जो ऊपर यहाँ देखिए ये लोकेशन इसका ऊपर पे मेंशन है ये लोकेशन क्या है ये उसका स्पेशल डेटा होता है ओके सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट स्पेशल डेटा एट्रीब्यूट डेटा नेक्स्ट टर्म पे हम लोग स्पेशल डेटा को आगे लेकर के चलेंगे और किस तरीके से एंटिटी को डिफाइन किया जाता है रास्टर डेटा और वेक्टर डेटा अभी तक हम लोग ब्रॉडली सुनते आ रहे हैं बट एग्जैक्टली exactly होता क्या है रास्टर डेटा एंड वेक्टर डेटा उसका पूरा डिटेल हम लोग नेक्स्ट लेक्चर में कवर करेंगे वेनेसडे के लेक्चर में सो दैट्स इट फ्रॉम माई साइड फॉर टूडे आप लोग अपने क्वेश्चन के लिए अच्छे से प्रिपेयर होकर के वेनेसडे को आइएगा थैंक यू सो मच किसी को कुछ पूछना है तो पूछ सकते हैं yes. मैम अभी आपने जो एक पॉलीगन सेलेक्ट किया था जिसमें थर्टी फोर पॉइंट दिखा रहे थे हाँ तो मैम उसमें वो जो थर्टी फोर पॉइंट है उनमें से अगर हम चाहें कोई पॉइंट डिलीट करने को तो डिलीट हो जाएगा क्या हाँ बिल्कुल हो जाएगा वॉट एक्स एडिटिंग आपने सीखी है QGIS में वॉट एक्स एडिटिंग करते हैं ना डिजिटाइजेशन करते टाइम मैम एक प्रॉब्लम थी वो आ, एक बार देख लीजिए स्क्रीन शेयर कर रहा हूँ ओके okay, बाकी को और किसी स्टूडेंट को कोई क्वेश्चन है मैम यस मैम जब हम सारे मैप को मर्ज कर दे रहे हैं तो मैम पूरी फाइल दो तीन दो तीन जीबी की बन जा रही है मैम तो मैम सिस्टम नहीं कर पा रहा मैम कोई ट्रिक है कि जिससे और इजी फ्लो हो काम अगर आपका सिस्टम इतनी बड़ी फाइल को हैंडल नहीं कर पा रहा है तो आप उसका क्लिक करा करके मर्ज मत कराइए ओके मैम आप सारी शीट्स को मर्ज मत कराओ क्योंकि मर्ज करने पर क्योंकि विदाउट मर्ज भी अगर आप उसको एक साथ खोलोगे तो भी वो एडजस्टमेंट की प्लेस होगी अगल बगल में ही प्लेस हो जाएगी तो मर्ज फाइल ऑल हम लोग यूज करते हैं क्योंकि उसी से इजिली वो हो जाता है बट अगर आपका सिस्टम हैंग कर जा रहा है उस फाइल को लेने में आप उसको मर्ज मत करो सिंपली क्लिक करके जो आपकी सारी फाइल्स आई हैं उनको एक साथ खोल दो और उसके ऊपर डिजिटाइजेशन कर दो ओके मैम थैंक यू मैम इज इट विजुअल यस इट इज विजिबल मैम ये गलती से मैंने ये बाउंड्री uh, फॉलो करके मतलब ये एरिया मैंने एक्स्ट्रा डिजिटाइज uh, कर दिया तो मुझे ये रिमूव करना था मैम तो आप उस पर चले जाओ आपका जो वर्टेक्स हाँ वर्टेक्स जो सेट करते हैं उस वाले पे क्लिक करो वर्टेक्स तो बहुत बहुत सारे पॉइंट है ना इसमें तब तो मैम बहुत दिक्कत होगी यहाँ पे मैंने जैसे सुन तो लो पहले बात आप क्लिक करो वर्टेक्स एडिट पे करेंट मैम आगे मुझे कुछ दिख नहीं रहा आपकी स्क्रीन चेंज नहीं हो रही है क्या हो गया 
ओके बाकी स्टूडेंट्स लीव कर सकते हैं क्लास ओवर है जिनको कुछ पूछना है वो स्टे करिए अदरवाइज आप सब लोग लीव कर सकते हैं अगर इसका सोल्यूशन देखना है तो आप लोग देख सकते हैं मैम मंडे को लाइव है मंडे को लाइव है बताइए एक मिनट हो जाइए कुछ क्वेश्चन पूछने मंडे को क्या हो गया है मैम मंडे को लाइव कैंसिल दिखा रहे कैलेंडर में नहीं वो कैलेंडर में कैंसिल इसलिए दिखा रहे क्योंकि वो कुछ स्टूडेंट्स में दिखती नहीं थी वो आपके में आ जाएगी मंडे के पहले क्लास के पहले वो आएगी क्लासेस जैसे चल रहे हैं वो वैसे ही चलेंगे कुछ स्टूडेंट्स के कैलेंडर में वो शो नहीं होता था उस कारण से वो प्रॉब्लम हो रही थी इस कारण से वो लेक्चर सीरीज को कैंसिल करके फिर से उसको करा रहे हैं मैम तो अभी शो हुआ क्या स्क्रीन तो आपकी विजिबल है लेकिन आपके नहीं दिखा दिखा रहा रहा है है तो मुझे मैप दिख रहा है आपका मैम इसका एक पॉसिबल सॉल्यूशन ये भी हो सकता है क्या जैसे हम इसको स्प्लिट कर दें एक पॉलीगन में जितना एक्स्ट्रा एरिया है उसके बाद उस नहीं वो सही तरीका नहीं है वर्टेक्स एडिट से ही करते हैं ये वर्टेक्स हाँ वर्टेक्स एडिट पर आपका सेलेक्ट हो गया ना अब इधर हाँ. के पॉइंट्स को सेलेक्ट करिए मैम एरिया की तरह मतलब पूरे पॉइंट्स को एक साथ रुक जाओ आप मैं अपनी स्क्रीन शेयर कर रही हूँ आप उसको देख लो ओके okay. 